This week we are going to learn how to download a font, install it, and then use it in an application. To get started we were going to go ahead and learn how to download a font. Now apologies in advance, I'm working off of, what, of a Windows 7 computer so all of these directions are specific to Windows 7. However, off of our course page I have linked to a fairly robust list of how to install fonts on different operating systems whether they be Windows um, XP or a Mac uh, version of an operating system so please refer to those written directions if you have anything other than Windows 7. I've gone ahead and navigated to a website called defont.com this is a website that I've listed on our learning page under week 8 and so you can certainly use this however the downside to fonts is also the upside fonts are a lot of fun to look at and to play around with and to use there are tons of fonts online that are free for personal use and if you also go out to font foundries these places that actually make fonts uh, for the digital world you will find a ton of fonts that you can actually pay for they're called font foundries because of course in the early days when a typeset piece was actually made it was made out of kind of a molten lead and um, so they made these things at foundries well the modern equivalent of that online is still a font foundry but of course it's done digitally so here I am at defonts.com and you can do uh, almost anything here that you want. The things you want to pay attention to are that the font will work on your particular platform. And generally, most of these are what are called true type fonts, and most of these should work just fine on either the Macintosh or the Windows platform. Now, I've chosen a phrase that I'm going to use in a later exercise that references fire. So I've come and I've found this particular font called Flame. Now, please know that you can use any font that you want for your exercises this week and obviously any time ever. You need to obviously match the font to the feeling, the emotion that you want to elicit out of your website. So if I'm talking about something fairly serious, I'm going to use a font that evokes a serious tone. Um, similar if I'm talking about something very, very lightweight, I can certainly uh, use a font that evokes uh, uh, lightweight thoughts. To grab this font what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it and once again before I even start that portion of it I'm going to squeeze my browser up just a little so you can see it. Notice over here it says free for personal use. So as long as it's free for personal use you can use it. However you do still need to give credit for it. So at the bottom of the page where you have used an image or this font, an image with this font or just the font by itself I would expect to see a credit given to this particular uh, font and in particular the author of the font. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. Now on my browser, I'm going to just sneak over here, on my, oops, sorry, on my browser down here is where it's being downloaded to. I'm using Chrome right now and I've set my preferences to where my downloads always happen to my desktop. However, depending on your computer, you may have set those downloads somewhere else. If you're using Windows 7, you may be downloading into your download folder. So you have to kind of go find that download and um, know where that is. Just as a quick tip, though, just in case you're not familiar with that, let me just do this super quick. Over here, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time getting there. There we go. Okay, so over here, notice I've got this little drop down, and most of the browsers will offer this. If you click on that, it's going to say show in folder, and I'm going to bring it up just a hair so you can see that. So you can say show in folder, and when you do that, you get an opportunity to actually see where the font is coming into. In this particular case, it's sitting in under my desktop, so I know that that's where it's at. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this because right now I don't need it any longer and here in fact is that font downloaded to my desktop. 
Now what I'm going to do, notice the little zipper icon on here. And again, for our folks using the Macintosh uh, platform, you're going to have some sort of symbol here indicating that it's zipped or compressed. You're going to right click on that and extract all. And then this is going to extract or unpack the file to your desktop. And notice that's uh, where it's pointing to. That's how I know it's going to my desktop. But you do want to pay attention to where it's, it's extracting it to. Go ahead and extract that, and here it comes uh, on this one. Now, when you open this folder, occasionally you'll get extra little files, such as a note from the author. You might get um, in that note some restrictions on how to use the font. Please, please read through that. Please give correct credit to those fonts. Most fonts um, that we can use on the Windows and Mac operating systems come in a true type font. Uh, file and you can see that that's designated here by the dot TTF standing for true type true type font to install it here on win 7 I'm going to simply right click on it and I'm going to click on install and it's going to go through its little install piece nothing significant happens but that's all there is to installing a new font I've also given you uh, a link um, to some directions on how to delete a font in your system and how to um, Again, install fonts for different operating systems. Now, what I'm left over with is an extracted folder called Flame and the compressed folder called Flame. Now, if you get rid of these, that's fine because the actual font file itself has been copied to the appropriate place on your hard drive. If you want to get rid of them, again, that's fine. If you want to hang on to them, I would suggest that what you do is set up a folder that is named the same as the location where you grab the font from. For example, if I grab this from defont.com, I might set up a folder called defont.com and I might tuck these in there. That way I know that if I ever have to use these fonts again, I have the original install files, but I also know where they came from so that I can give proper citations later on. Okay, that ends the uh, portion of installing a font. I'm going to stop now and I'll be back in a minute.